Hi, uh, in this video we'll start some hands-on programming related to Rust and uh, as we know uh, the basic the most basic program which you could write in any of the languages is hello world so what I'll do here is I'll basically show you how exactly a, a Rust program is uh, written and, and, and we'll try to dig deeper into how exactly it, it works and what you need to do in order to run a Rust program so what I'll do here is uh, I'll just uh, open my Visual Studio code and uh, I'll get inside where am I right now I'll just clear this so I'm inside Rust folder what I'll do is I'll, I'll create a main.rs file now if you might see that I have written main.rs so the extension of Rust files is .rs just like extension of Java files are .java uh, even for uh, Python, it's .py. Even for JS, it's .js. For TypeScript, it's .ts. So for us, it is .rs. So if you go to the Notion doc, uh, what we'll do here is uh, we'll make a source file and call it main.rs. Rust files always end with an extension called .rs extension. And if if you want to have more uh, letters or or more uh, words in your name uh, in your file name then you'll have to add an underscore so if i if i write hello world then it should be hello underscore world dot rs that's the convention rather than going straight forward for hello world dot rs now what we'll do is we'll basically use uh, the same snippet which i mentioned here and write and what i'll do is i'll do print ln hello world And it ends with a semicolon. Now I have I have saved this code uh, right now. But if if like other language, if you are from say suppose Python or JavaScript, you could directly run it and it will work. But in case of Rust, th there are some catches. You have to compile it first. It it will not directly execute. It has to compile the whole like you have to compile the whole program first and then generate an executable file. And then once the executable file is generated, in that case you could execute it so we'll go step by step now in order to generate the executable file we'll have to use the rust c command and what we'll do here is we'll do rust c main.rs now this will basically generate a main file here if you could see you could see a main file here as well now our job is to execute this file we are not going to execute the main.rs file we are going to execute main the main file and, and in order to execute it, I could just write dot slash main. And you could see hello world is printed here. Now it works by forward slash dot main, like dot forward slash main in Mac and Linux. But if you are someone who is trying this on Windows, it should be the other way around. Like there should be a backslash main. I'm, since I'm using a MacBook actually, uh, it has to be forward slash. Now let's get into the nitty gritties of what exactly this Rust main code is basically. So it, it's quite simple if you have some coding language that this is more of a print statement, but you might have seen there is an exclamation mark here. Now, what exactly is that exclamation mark? So print ln exclamation mark calls a Rust macro. Macro is something uh, which is different from a function, but it, it generates extended code of Rust actually. We'll, we'll look into uh, mac macros actually in coming lectures, but uh, I'll, I'll, I'll just give you a hint about it. It's, it's different than function, but it's, it is of many uses actually over functions as well. The second part of the code is you have a string and the third part is a semicolon. So if you are from Java background, uh, semicolon is quite required here it will it will not compile actually if you don't have a semicolon or you'll not get desired output actually so semicolons are something which are very much required here now uh, as I mentioned before you have to compile any other rust code which you have written just like we have written main.rs you have to compile it first and it'll create a main file and then you'll be able to execute it so you need main.rs actually uh, uh, and you have to compile it now if, if I if you want me to show you I could show you there are two different files generated here one is main.rs and the other one is main so this is the file which we use for execution and yep the same thing here if you're someone from uh, Ruby Python or JS you directly run the files but in case of 
rest you have to make sure that you have generated the uh, or, or compiled that specific file first and then generated a new file which is executable now the biggest advantage uh, i see here with respect to rust is even if uh, i ship you an executable file and you your system doesn't have rust on it or rust c on it you will still be able to execute it actually and but it, it's not the case, case with python or js or or even ruby if, if i give you a .py file and i ask you to execute it you might not be able to do it because you need python on your local you need ruby on your local or even javascript on your local so that's that's a, a bigger advantage here and yeah here is our hello world program uh, if you have any doubts uh, let me know next lecture will be covering more of cargo and it's an important one so see you there and i'll keep on updating uh, this notion doc feel free to have it thank you